On the very first day of substantive debate, when Edmund Randolph, the governor of Virginia, introduces what's known as the Virginia Plan. The Virginia Plan says representation should be based on population. And immediately, somebody suggests that they put the word free in front of population. And that leads to a debate. And they decide not to debate that any further that day. They debate how you count slaves for representation over and over and over again. And the nation they envisioned required money, required labor, and required what that labor uh, created. And so they decided to go against what they knew at the time was the better judgment of true freemen and true believers in God. And they decided that they would put their greed before all else. This is a commerce equation that works. We know if we work people for free, on land we obtain for free, we make a profit free and clear. It was not inevitable. To be sure, the Constitution would not have abolished slavery. But I believe that the multiple protections for slavery were not foreordained. In the debate over how to choose the president, James Madison says the fittest thing, that is the most appropriate thing, would be for the people to elect the president. And then he says, but if that happens, our Negroes won't count. And of course, what he means by our Negroes won't count is the slaves aren't going to vote. Uh, Virginia is the largest state in the country by population, but 40% of the population are slaves. And so if you can't fold the slaves into the election of the president, Virginia won't get to elect its presidents. So you get the Electoral College, which is made up by giving electors based on the number of representatives in Congress you have, and the number of representatives in Congress is based on the three-fifths clause. And so when you get to, say, the crucial presidential election of 1800, Jefferson is elected president because of the electors created by the three-fifths clause. If there had been no slaves counted for purposes of representation, Jefferson would not have been elected president in 1800. Um, and it's clear, it's open. Madison says it. People say it all the time. And without the three-fifths clause and the rise of the southern slave power in national politics, our entire national history would be different. And the rationalization for slavery continuing and for the compromise to allow slavery to continue is based on what we're still dealing with today, which is a nation of disparate backgrounds and, and religions and beliefs brought together in a way that coalesces around whiteness. And one way for whiteness to actually have a, a reality to it is to have blackness, is to have people of color, is to have the other. And so the xenophobia has been a part of the beginning of this nation. Martin warned the continuance of slavery, quote, ought to be considered as justly exposing us to the displeasure and vengeance of him who is we equally Lord of all, and who views with equal eye the poor African slave and his American master. He called slavery inconsistent with the principles of the revolution and dishonorable to the American character.